and everybody listen. I am hoping that you are listening. That is the third time I said to listen. <laughs> it is so imperative because I'm sitting here with my brother, Dr. Ricky Allman, who came to the revolution today, taught a message, don't lose your mind is that because you're made in the image of God, because you have the spirit of God, your very thoughts are designed to be the glory of God. I didn't say they're designed to give God glory. They're designed to be God's glory or atmosphere. My question to you is, is are the thoughts that you've been thinking uh, enough to give God atmosphere that he can do everything in your life that he needs to do for your life? The reason that some things are not showing up for you uh, is because you haven't given God proper atmosphere to move through you. But if you'll shift your thoughts, you can change your life. Tell somebody I already got it. That means everything you want as your future is already in your soul, your suke. And all you have to do is bring your thoughts into alignment with his will. And when my taboshia, when my thoughts come into alignment with his will uh, then all I've got to do is think uh, what it is that he's already said uh, and before I ever speak it uh, it will already become uh, what he said it would be because it had so many dimensions on the importance of your thinking and how your thinking shapes your understanding of your identity so that you can walk out in purpose so much in culture has been projected on us that people do not know who they really are based on who God said. The way that he broke this down, you need to go back and watch it. But this is the Afterglow, and we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Ricky Allman. Love brother. you, my brother. Man, it's so good to see you. Listen, why don't you just Happy jump 13th in? Happy 13th birthday. Oh, man. Listen, man. Mm-hmm. Thank you, man. Why, I mean, just jump in wow. wherever you want to jump okay. in. Okay. Uh, so profile. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, so that was the subject yeah. or the title or the tag. Yeah. Uh, don't lose your mind with the emphasis being on your because it's about identity. Yeah. Um, and, and I think what's very critical is that it's not about what you think, but it's about where you're thinking from. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't often consider that when it comes to our thoughts uh, because the reality is Uh, many of the thought processes or thought cycles is what I call them that we have are oftentimes projected onto us uh, by situations and circumstances around us. And so we acquiesce to them. uh, We assimilate into them. We take ownership of them only to come to certain points and places in life where we realize that we're attracting things to us that doesn't look like who we know we are. Yeah. And so there's a disconnect between what people see as us and what we're projecting as us. Yeah. And so as a result, uh, you'll find yourself attracting things. You go, why am I attracting this? Where is this coming from? It's coming from the fragrance that you're sending out. Because that's really what your thoughts are. It's it's sort of the odor, the aroma uh, that you carry on your life. And, and so we talked about how when you reshape or retrain your thoughts, you reshape your life and you rewire your brain. So retrain your thoughts, you reshape your life, and you rewire your brain. In neuroscience, it's known as neuroplasticity. So say that fast three times, okay? Uh, neuroplasticity. And, and of course, uh, the key is in the root word, plasticity or plastic or bendable or pliable. So that's really what your brain is. It's, it's like this, almost like a gel-like substance that can be molded, right? Uh, and so the thoughts that you're putting in it, it's called neural synapsis. The thoughts that you're sending, the signals that you're sending to your brain are literally shaping your brain and ultimately shaping uh, your life. There's so much uh, that was unpacked today and and, and shared today, Uh, but but I think the key is, is recognizing 
what I call divine intentionality. That, that God is so intricate and intimate in our lives that with intentionality, he has already ordered to us everything that he's got right. ordered for us. Right. Yeah, it's like it's all connected. Our part is to align with that, and that's where our thoughts come in. Right. You know, in, in church, we call it agreement, right? right? right, right, right. But, it, but it's really an alignment because it, it, it has to be every thought you have. You get what I'm saying? It can't be selective thinking. Yeah. It's got to be every thought you have has to be aligned with the full measure of who he's called you to be. So I got a question. So, yes. I mean, you were appointed powerful and practical tonight, as usual. Um, in the application of this, Proverbs 4.23 was the text. Guard your heart with all diligence. Out of it comes an issue yes, of life. Right. So because so much of our thinking and our behavior is practically shaped by the people that influence us, mm -hmm. some have influenced us in ways that we should project that identity, mm -hmm. where some have had the wrong preconceptions of us and have, and we wrongly project that mm -hmm. identity. How do we filter, decide, determine, whatever word we want to use, guard, mm -hmm. who we should allow to influence our thinking so that we gain identity because I mean quite frankly I mean there are just as much as there are people that see us wrongly mm -hmm. and then influence mm -hmm. us and project that and we live that out there are people that see us rightly and, and as God sees us and sometimes even better or in our blind spots mm -hmm. than we see ourselves that then we should listen to what they say and help and, and allow them to help shape who we are so how do we filter determine predetermine who it is that we should be listening to and ignoring when it comes to helping our thinking and they are so, so that's that's a multi-layered question. It's a great question. The first layer of that, obviously, is you being alignment within yourself first. with who God says about you, because that's really going to determine what you attract. If if you know that, if you align with what God says about you, there's almost like this innate repellent, right, <laughs> to the to those people that want to project things that are not you or that respond to you right. outside of who you are. Right. The key to assessing or filtering who belongs there is found in Amos. Yeah. How can two walk together except exactly. they be agreed? How can two have communion or talk intimately except they first communicate or they're seeing the same vision right, is right, what right, it's saying. Right. So again, it's almost an innate thing where you'll know it would resonate with your suke, right? right. We talked about that today. So, your soul, right. your psychology, there'll right. be an agreement. Like you ever started having a conversation with somebody and almost gave you a headache? Yeah. Like instantly, because it's just like, okay, some you can even put your finger on it, or you've ever been talking to somebody where everything you said they misunderstood it. Yes. Like it didn't, it didn't matter how many times you explained it, yes. like they just couldn't get it. Yes. And then on the other hand, the flip side of that. Have you ever talked to somebody yeah. where as soon as you start talking, they yeah. carried your thought, That's right. elucidated, expanded it. So that's the power of not losing your yes. mind. Right. Because if you've got your mind, you've got that built-in filter to that know. knows. But if you don't have your mind, yeah. then, then it's, it's, you're, it's almost like you're, it's a game of chance, yeah. right? You, you might attract somebody who right. gets it. Right. You may not. You get what I'm saying? And then you got to do extra work yeah. because the real work starts with you. Yeah. So you're trying to process. Here's the thing. We're trying to process people when we ought to be processing ourselves. Once I learn how to process myself, then processing me builds in a filter, what we call discernment, right. that knows who and what needs to be connected to. That was a great question. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. I just think because I think that, you know, we can't go to the extreme of saying, well, I don't care what nobody think about me. You know, I'm going mm -hmm. to do this because that ain't always in alignment. You need to have, you need to care about what some people think about you, but just caring about the right people thinking. Certain things well, about I'll you. put it like this. You can't be preoccupied with, with the what? thought. That, that cannot be the origin right. of your thoughts. That's right. And that's the, the issue. agreement. The so, affirmation. So the it's got to, it's got to start with what God is putting, because Here's the thing, and, and this is what we miss. God doesn't use people as the mitigating factors 
for your perception. Right. God uses people as tools to catalyze and cultivate your identity. What if you don't know? What if you start off with no awareness of what God thinks about you? Uh, no understanding of your identity because all of your life has been filtered or projected from people that had no awareness about God. So they cultivated people that's watching this video. Some of them have spiritual insight. Mm -hmm. Some of them have uh, no soberness or have not uh, become aware that, that God has already equip them or wire right. them for who they are. So all of their influences, everything they're living out is, a, is misguided. How do they How do they come into alignment, agreement, or discover? Well, it's, it's like today, right? It's like a message like today. It's like what the revolution represents. Yeah. It's like what you and your wife represents. It's God then will assign people. Somebody. <laughs> right. Who, who have what you need. Who, who are in the right space, right, right. <laughs> who have the right mind right. that can help you to discover your mind. Right. So that, you know, that's the process. That's so, so it's still, but, but the thing is, we, we've got to help people to understand, even in that case, when it comes to mentors, it's still they're about, not there to dictate. No, right? it's still about them. You know it's the right person because they see you, you can help that, you that's develop what's already in, in you, you. you. Not trying to get you to mimic them. Not giving you another projection. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, listen, we can do this all day, <laughs> every day. We actually do do this <laughs> yeah. whenever we're together. Yeah, just on a regular basis. Today, base. we thought it'd be great for you to get a little snapshot of this moment. Again, I say the message was incredible. That's what you really want to tap into. This will make understanding, but this is so provocative. It stands on its own. I just want to thank my friend and brother for being who he is and who he's always been every day of my life. And today, for sharing that with you. This is a conversation with Dr. Ricky Young. You heard it here. And if you don't have it, go get his life book right now. It's on his website, rickyalman.com. RickyAlman.org. RickyAlman.org. And listen, on top of that, what I was going to say is even better, you may want to invite him to your city to do live talks and sit down practically, go through the book, download it, check it out. It's on all platforms. Follow him on all social media platforms. This man, this man, this person is who he is all the time. You want to tap into that. You want to say something? I just want to say don't lose your mind. Yeah. In a culture that's filled with image disturbance and image distortion. I'm not gonna talk about it. You go back and hear the message. You can hear about that. Don't lose your mind. Hold on to your mind. All right? Bless you. God bless you.